Okay, um, this is a Micro Mega CD player, and uh, it's it's got a few problems. And you know, I've looked on the internet. Uh, there's very little information about Micro Mega on the internet, um, although um, the innards, uh, the CD part portion of this, is a Philips um, CD drive. Uh, but I, I thought uh, it's a neighbor's, not mine, and I just thought um, I'm going to attempt to repair it and uh, hopefully we can uh, bring this thing back to life. So I just thought I would uh, put a little information out there. Um, if it helps save uh, somebody some time, uh, that's great. Um, hopefully, hopefully my repair is successful. I haven't done it yet. I've had it apart a couple of times. Uh, once to one, one of the problems that I see in some of the forums is that um, the uh, guides get sticky that they use the wrong kind of grease when they manufactured it and so I've, I've done uh, that sort of maintenance clean the slides um, uh, relubricated them and that actually made a difference it did track better um, in fact for most CDs it tracks fine um, this one in particular, uh, it's in here, I think it should play fine, I would think. And, and it does, it recognizes the CD and it, it plays, plays quite fine. Um, there is one that... Seems to have trouble with um, the sort of the darker colored CDs, so that's leading me uh, to believe that the laser's weak, worn out. And I've actually cleaned the laser. There is a video on the internet where they actually take the laser out, apart, clean the mirror and the underside of the lens, and I did that as well. And still, uh, it still has issues. Um, this one played fine, and uh, this one might even err, I don't know. No, looks like, no, it, it's having trouble. Um, jumping all over the place, so this particular CD um, is a no-go. So that's a good test at the end of the whole operation. Let's see if uh, we can play this one. So let's get started. Let's uh, take it apart. So the taking the case off is pretty simple. It has six uh, Torx head screws. I think they're T10. And uh, yeah, they, they just have to come out. And then we'll slide the case off. So it's actually a, a pretty well constructed uh, unit. As I said before, the drive, this is a Phillips, Phillips drive here. And, um, and the components, they've used good components. And uh, the, you can see the date code on any of these. We get some focus here. So, yeah, you can see there the date code is uh, 94, I guess, on on that. So, uh, built back in the 90s, of course. Yeah, to uh, take the the drive. Uh, door out. 
you just have to pull it to the very end and at the very back here there's a little um, clip that you move to the right and uh, to release the door and then the door just comes off pretty pretty simple there are <clears throat> there's actually three connections to the to the circuit board there's one here that has to be removed there's the main uh, ribbon connector which I, you'll I'll show you that in a moment and then on this side there's another uh, underneath un connected to the circuit board so they they have to come off and then there's three screws on the bottom to remove the whole um, the, the whole mechanism So we'll just undo those screws. There are T20, there's three of them. Yeah. And the drive should come out. This has to be unplugged here. And the unit you lift up. And underneath it there is the ribbon cable. And there are two tabs, one on either end, that uh, should be pushed towards the back of the unit. I'll do a, maybe do a close-up of that so you can see how they, how that comes out. Probably easier to do it with the tape unit out. Yeah. Maybe a little easier to see it with the <clears throat> with the drive out of the way. These tabs on the end are lifted up. And once they're lifted up like that, you slide in the ribbon cable um, and then lock it in place by pushing the tabs down. So this is, this is the unit here and it has to be taken out completely. And to do that, um, the wires have to be unrooted, unrouted from the plastic housing like so and once you do that then this whole um, sled can be removed out the back I believe of the unit like so so the drive itself is supported by these four uh, little rubber um, mounts, I guess you would call them. There's one there, one here, uh, one here, and one here. So we'll just take that out. And uh, uh, one of the things we are going to have to do is transfer all the wiring over because the replacement unit um, does not come with wires, so we'll have to be very careful about uh, replacing the wires. That one came out anyway. That one came out quite easy. Try not to damage them because they don't come with the other unit. There.
Oh, and the wires are rooted here as well. <clears throat> Always good to take pictures. So you know exactly how the wire routing is. And we will remove this unit. Just need to wrap quite tight around the wires. There we are. And that's our weak laser unit and I have both fingers crossed that the new unit works because <clears throat> I wasn't too impressed with the shipping it just came in a bag like this and uh, so we're hoping for the best <laughs> it does look pretty much the same one thing I did notice I've looked at it already is the motor um, oh no, actually the motor is the same. I was going to say it was smaller, but the motor looks the same. So, um, you want to check... <clears throat> now one thing I'm going to do for sure when I'm handling that is I'm going to ground myself. Um, always a wise thing to do for the new unit. Yeah, the wires here are for uh, the um, the sled motor, um, which um, drives it back and forth. The turntable, of course, and also the the limit switch. So there's three sets of wires.
So far I haven't destroyed anything major, which is good. So uh, yeah, I didn't <clears throat> show my all my struggling with the wires, but I think I've got them the same as the picture I took. So they're nicely rooted so that we can uh, put this unit in and uh, see if it plays. So let's uh, let's try it. I can pretty well tell the way the wires are uh, bent, how it went. That should be it. Looks good. There, there is a um, there is a ground clip um, across the connector, which you want to take off at the very, very end, uh, just before you plug it in. So I think we're good. I think we're good to go here. And there are no uh, there are no adjustments either. Um, should be pretty well uh, plug and play. At least that's what I'm hoping. So I'm going to plug myself back in again. Remove the ground clip.
plug things back in. So, and the part for this is a CDM 12.4 slash 05, so... Bob's your uncle if it works. Need to do these up there. It's like a rubber sort of mount, so you don't want to do it up too tight, terribly tight. So I think we're ready to give her a try. Slide the door back in. My power. Plug in some audio. And it doesn't open. Oh, what the heck? Now it open. Sure why it did that. Spinning in the right direction, but not finding the, the track. Unsuccessful. Well, yeah, it was a bummer. I was excited. Well, my first disappointment in changing over the um, the CD drives. Um, may, may be salvageable. What I found, <clears throat> this is the unit that um, I swapped everything over to, but I found the motor, the sled motor, wouldn't drive the carriage. So I've, I've actually switched the motors now. So this is the motor that came with the replacement unit, and when I put a volt and a half on the motor, the sled does not move. Either either polarity doesn't matter. Uh, the sled does not move. Now the motor did turn, but it it doesn't have enough um, oomph to drive the sled. <clears throat> and the original motor that was in the original unit is here, and hopefully we can clip on to the battery terminals. 
<clears throat> does drive the sled without any difficulty at all. So I'm going to uh, <clears throat> keep my fingers crossed that was the problem. So we are going to reassemble it and uh, we'll, we'll give it another try. Well, after all of that, it does work. It's kind of a bit of a, a nuisance that the, um, the sled motor was no good on the drive that uh, I got, but it does work. <clears throat> We'll try the CD that uh, was problematic. It does load. It is playing. is a good sign. But it did skip. So, is it the CD or is it the player? We'll have to try it on another player. <laughs> 